Change is happening every day. New breakthroughs are occurring every single second. It's a fantastic time to be around. Cars are changing as well. EVs are getting greater range. Autonomy is on its way. But while there's lots of hubbub about getting the general public from A to B as cleanly and as safely as possible, you could be forgiven for thinking that the sports car might just go the way of the dodo. But thankfully, I've got two cars that beg to differ. Meets the BMW i8 and the Honda NSX. Both have mid-mounted internal combustion engines, electric motors driving the front wheels, and a small electric power plant to plug torque gaps. Both use petrol and electricity, and both cost north of £100,000. The Honda further north than the Bimmer. Remarkably similar to that you'll find in the Porsche 918, the Ferrari LaFerrari and the McLaren P1. Basically, electric stuff hooked up to a mid-mounted internal combustion engine to make pretty thing go fast. Yet the BMW and the Honda go about the same job very differently. The i8 was arguably the first supercar with this tech. Yeah, the hypercars may have got there first, but the i8, well, it took one step closer to affordable. With 357 brake horsepower on tap from a 1.5 litre turbocharged three cylinder engine and electric power plants as well, the i8 will do 0 to 62 in 4.4 seconds. Now, that's about on pace with a box fresh Porsche 911 Carrera with a manual gearbox. Not exactly slow, is it? And it'll do that all the while managing a claimed 134.5 mpg. Now, I'm on a racetrack, so I'm not going to manage the latter, but I might just get the former. Its top speed is limited to 155 miles an hour, and it weighs just under 1,500 kilos thanks to a liberal use of carbon fibre reinforced plastic and other lightweight materials. Its rear tyres are narrow, and its body is as aerodynamic as possible to let it slice through the air cleanly. The IA claims to offer sports car thrills with eco cred that does it well. We have racetrack. Forget eco. Let's see how fun it is. First and foremost, in here it doesn't half sound good. Nice burbly little three pop. I mean, no, not as gruff as other sports cars, obviously, but it resonates really well through the cockpit. Now, interestingly, BMW wants to keep this super, super light, so the glass separating me and the engine bay thing in the middle is Gorilla Glass, like what you get on your iPhone, because it's lighter than a normal bit of glass. The passenger cell is made out of carbon fibre reinforced plastic, but it's all designed to be super, super light to get as many MPG as possible, but also it means the lighter the car is, the more you can do with less power. And my, it's quite quick. Surprisingly quick, actually. Considering the company it's keeping today, that NSX is way more powerful, but this feels fast. And more impressively, it feels very light on its feet. It's quite a nimble car. The steering isn't too heavy. The throttle response is instantaneous, as you would expect from a car with hybrid assistance. We're doing 100, 110, 115, then we brake, and the brakes are phenomenally good. Easy to modulate, they've got great feel to them, up to a point, and then you start thinking, where's this going, where's this going, where's this going? Ah, oh, good, we're stopping. And you just give it a little prod of the paddle, and you get a little vroom, a little fart from the eco car. Now down here in front of me, there's lots of gauges telling me RPM and speed and all that and my battery, I'm depleting that like a hero going around here, but it does regen that from the brakes, a little like the NSX, you do get some brake regen on that. As a sports car, it's great, my only gripe is that it is a little bit understeering. You can get it to go, but it's not as sharp as you'd want a proper sports car to be, but on the day-to-day, -day, the i8, absolutely fine. It's fast, it offers thrills, it feels sharp enough, and it's certainly quick enough. The look of it, for one, the drama of it, it's an eco car that wasn't boring to look at. The doors, my favourite bit of the car, arguably, they're just wicked. It's a very visually arresting car. Drive one of these down the street and people are going to pay attention because it looks like a concept car, because it basically is.
It's not exactly a track monster, but it's fun and makes an alright noise. You pay no vehicle excise duty, and there's even a small set of rear seats for people who don't like their children. It's BMW's Halo Eco car, and as a first step, it's rather wonderful. <laughs> tech on board the NSX, except it's got two more litres to play with and three more cylinders. In all, there's a three and a half litre twin turbocharged V6, two electric motors up front, and then another electric motor to act as a torque gap filler and a bit of a starter motor. Now, that three and a half litre V6 kicks out 500 horsepower all on its own, but in all, there's 574 brake horsepower to play with. But unlike the i8, all the electric stuff is here for more speed. It's taken Honda a long, long time to get the NSX to market, but it's a Honda after all. It had to be perfect straight out of the box. Like the original NSX, it had to take on the world's best and at least be on par. So those two motors up front are there for a little bit of torque vectoring and to add a little bit of extra go as and when you need it. 0-62 takes around three seconds and its top speed is 191 miles an hour. To put it politely, the NSX ain't slow. I like this approach to tech. Yes, you can use it to make Mother Nature happy, or you can take it and use it to make cool things go really, really fast. The NSX is the car that took a million years to develop. So long. By the time they actually launched this, I was quite bored of it. To be honest, I'd seen the shape a million times in different configurations and all concept this, concept that, whatever. Now it's here. Oh my, does it look good. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Much like the i8, this is an eco car. It's not really an eco car that looks the absolute balls. In my wing mirrors, I've got angular sort of pod things, the air intakes for the engine. The front looks just phenomenal. It's a stunning car to look at and it turns heads everywhere. I had two guys randomly pat me on the street and then find me on Twitter because they searched for this thing. Because it's that distinctive. And when cars do that to people, I'm happy. Now, as far as the power plant goes, the V6 sounds pretty chuffing good. A little bit droney, not the most exciting thing in the world, but it makes the right noises when you want it to. It's communicative, it handles so well, and my God, all that electric assistance is so fast. It makes it mega quick. All of that hybrid stuff is just for speed. Now, as you'd expect, because it's all hybridy, the throttle response is absolutely instant from this thing. You just fly. There's that torque gap motor, there's the electric motors at the front, and then that thing. Now, we've got the car in track mode, which turns the electric toys off let you get a little bit quick and the back end a little bit slippery and the tyres do like to squeal. But the thing that I love most about the whole handling setup is the way it goes around corners. It's just phenomenal because those two electric motors at the front pull you around a bend. You can go around a little bit quicker than you thought you could. Power it down, four wheel grip, off we go. All of the power can just be applied. You can get away with some serious speed in this. This car is special. It's a very, very special vehicle. It offers so much pace. There's loads of grip. The brakes are simply incredible. And the look of it is something else. I like what BMW's done with the i8. I love what Honda has done with the NSX. Absolutely adore it. Two takes on change, the iPhone generation for cars, if you will. They won't do the driving for you, they won't mollycoddle you. They're here to excite the senses while using as much modern technology as possible to deliver an experience fit for the modern driver. Both the NSX and the i8 are marvels of engineering. They both use similar technologies to achieve very different results. So to those of you that are worried that maybe the sports car is going, look behind me, because these two 
they're just the start. Hello, did you enjoy that video? I sincerely hope you did. And do you fancy a little bit more carfection in your life today? Because if you want to see our next video before it goes live here on YouTube, you can click right here to go to carfection.com where it's waiting for you right now. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and if you haven't already, to subscribe to the channel, which you can do by clicking here.